Why are you afraid to hit the button? Go ahead. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, friends. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. This is episode 48. Wow. Today is Saturday, October 30th. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. We're coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut. And what? I was going to say I'm a little rusty. We're a little rusty. I know. It's been a month, guys. We've never skipped a week before. We had never. Or a fortnight. Yeah, we never missed our bi-weekly podcast. But we did do our live last week, which was a ton of fun. ton of fun. Um, Oh my gosh. Thank you all for coming. Yes. And for those of you who didn't come, thank you for watching the video even after the fact. We showed a lot of our um, acquisitions and shared some of our really fun times over at Rhinebeck. Um, So it was really cool to share all that. And obviously, we were very, very excited. So it's cool to see your comments um, and for you to share some of your stories too. So thanks for checking that out. If you haven't already, it is saved on our channel if you want to go back and kind of see uh, what we got. Yeah, we. I thought it was a really good way to talk about our experience mm-hmm. at Rhinebeck instead of making one super long, drawn out podcasty episode. Which is uh, typically what we do anyway. We do. We do some longer, you know, two and a half hour episodes. But I thought it was a really good way to just really put the focus yeah. on that experience. Yeah, totally. And show what we bought and give some of our like feedback and how we felt throughout the entire weekend. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. The lives are always fun. We enjoy them all. Yeah. But that type of live is my favorite. My two favorite lives that we've done were... This one, and then the one that we did around New Year's because we talked about what we had our favorite knits from oh from twenty right twenty yes so we so I like the kind of focused lives where we have kind of an agenda were we focused though we were we our we focus were? was Rhinebeck this time oh, around right in the one but we may have moved around quite a bit inside right. that but Bubble. either way it was a really good time totally so thank you for that. Uh, What else do we have going on? I really don't know. So we typically talk about... Yeah, we talk about like kind of what we've been up to. Yeah. Right? So So obviously Rhinebeck was the biggest thing, which we talked about already. And we went to... before The week before that, we went to um, Kelly and Gary's. Yes, we did. We went to our our friend Kelly and Gary's and our God kids. Mm -hmm. Our two goddaughters were having birthdays the youngest was turning 17 and the week and i think it's like 10 days later the oldest is turning 20 which which is boggling my mind not talk about that Remember when she was a little pee in kelly's belly yeah yeah so we had it was really great we i mm-hmm. think was that the first time that we've seen them no it wasn't the first time no we it's saw them in the, the summer second time that right. we've seen them since covid Right. Infected the world. Right. So it was nice to like hang out and chat and um Yeah, we got to meet Lily's boyfriend. We did. He's really cool. Yeah, he's really Yeah, I like nice him. Guy. I approve. We got I forgot hang- to text Lily. I should have texted her saying I approve. Did you do that? No, I didn't. No. Uh yeah, it was just a really, really good time. Hung out, had some cakes, some food, some chips, mm-hmm. and just chatted, which is always always fun with them. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk for hours and hours. And then let's see. So that was the weekend after the last episode. I believe. If not, maybe the Sunday after. Maybe. It may have been the day after. And then we had Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. So you know how that went. And then last weekend we did... No, No, last weekend was the Rhinebeck recap. Oh, yeah. Last weekend we did our live. Yeah. um, Last Saturday, I think it was. Yeah. So last Saturday I had... It might um, have been Sunday. No, our live was Sunday. I went the day before. Oh, Yeah. So last Saturday, I went to a celebration of life for one of my friend's old managers. She was the, it was like my first adult job, um, my first call center job. And she was my manager, but we hung out outside of work. um, And she like, she helped me get the apartment. into the apartment building that we lived in before buying the house. She gave me my first and like last month's rent um, so that I could get into that apartment building and just an overall great person. And she had a long battle with cancer and passed Mm -hmm. away. I think it was about a month ago and her husband was holding a celebration of life for friends, family and coworkers. Which was, was really an awesome way to remember her. I thought, 
Yes, and they had like a, a TV screen up with pictures of her. And it was funny, like uh, w- there were pictures of my friend Beth and I uh, in there with Karen and old coworkers in there. What was really nice about that day was that I got to see a bunch of my old coworkers. I left there 15 years ago. Wow. So a lot of my coworkers are still there and getting to see them and just catch up and chat was really nice. And the funny, well, not funny, but interesting. No, funny, I guess. Thing was. Not really funny, haha, it's not but funny, funny like, like, wow. Yeah, it was just one of those moments. Yeah. So there were some speeches done. And right before the speeches, my friend Beth and I were talking and she asked me about Rhinebeck. So we started talking to her about that. Speeches happened. And the sister-in-law of um, Karen got up and did her speech. She was the first, she was the second person to speak. And she was just talking all these good stories. And one of the final stories she mentioned, uh, she was just talking about how Karen like got her out of her shell and liked mm-hmm. to just do stuff. One day she called her and said, hey, we're going to take Anthony to Rhinebeck. And Beth and I looked at each other with this dumbfounded look on our face of what are the chances that I'd gone the weekend before. You were just talking about it right Beth before this speech. just asked me about it. We just yeah. spoke about it. And then somebody I don't know told the story of Karen and her son going to Rhinebeck. So it yeah. was just, it was Super cool. a, like a weird type of moment but yeah. that was it it was a nice time it the food was great the company was good uh there were laughs so it was a good celebration that's awesome and then sunday we did our live we did and then and that we, was fun yeah that was that was really fun oh my god so much fun i feel like i could do that like every week we yeah. won't do that though but no. i feel like i could <laughs> um and then yeah that was that we just kind of hunkered down and worked um i started yeah, work. school uh, so i finished one class um, went right into this next class, and this class that I'm taking now is ridiculous. So, like, it opened up on last Monday. It opened, and everything became available. Um, and then immediately, I had like a five paper, five page paper to write, and like all these other assignments to do. So, took away a lot of my knitting. <laughs> what? Nothing. Did I say like a million no, times? Go ahead. Oh. I um. I was thinking something else that when you were saying that too. I'm sorry. Continue, please. No, that's pretty much no, it. No, it's all so, about you now, Princess. Go ahead. Well, thanks. So it was just um, school was taking up quite a bit of my time, and that's it. Just regular life. That's our update, I think. Yeah, I think that's yeah. our update. That's kind of what we've been up to. Yeah. So let's do some admin stuff. Okay. So we have a uh, make along going on right now. Still, it is the fall. Uh, accessory accessories knit along i think i called it accessorize on did you yeah i think i was trying to be a little cheeky so i think i called it accessorize cheeky. on ravelry mm-hmm. and then we also are drawing prizes from uh, instagram as well so we have a hashtag it's natr fall, fall 2021 2021 we have so many entries and we they're do. so cute we were looking at them the other day there's this one who just submitted one cute to you? Cute one that I would love to show, actually, and I should have been a little bit more prepared. Kate just commented on it, and I did think she? I did too. I think it was by we met her at Rhinebeck. Um, so, um, so that's going on right now. Basically, um, anything you can tell us, it's an accessory. Is that's really pretty? Right? It's a muscle bar or muscle bar. Yeah. Hashtag, let me, let me do a little search. N-A-T-R. It's fall 2021. Fall. I have it right here. Okay. Oh, you're looking. I'm looking for I this see. one picture. It was so cute. Um, I mean, guys, like, you are all coming out. There's so many socks. There's hats. There's cowls and... Um, a crocheted one. Shawls. I just saw. Yeah. Look at this There's one. a nice crochet hat. Oh, that's fun. So it's been awesome seeing... What you guys can come up Ooh, with. What shawl's this? That's pretty. I know. We get some ideas. Oh, look. I think this is my mom's. Unpre- it is. Look. look. Look what my mom did. Look at this shawl, you guys. This is called the Unpredictables shawl. Okay. This, I can't. This is by Peace Love Harmonit. And it is so adorable. Um, She knit 
her kids' hats. This idea was Harry Potter, but it turned into more of a Lego-like pattern. Um, but look how cute the picture is. Doesn't that yeah. just break your heart? It's so cute. So we have loved seeing all of these things. So please, when you put... Um, when you post on Instagram, oh my god, this is cute too. When you post on Instagram, just please tag us, hashtag NATRFall21. Um, tag us as well on Instagram, hashtag needles at the ready pod, just so that we can make sure that we're, even though we're following the hashtag, somehow the algorithm like pops up a little bit more if we're like tagged specifically. Um, speaking of that, you should mention that you named your, you changed your Instagram name. Oh, I did change. Okay, so I did change my Instagram name. So I am now. Ray J Nitz on Instagram. Ray dot J dot Nitz. J is my middle initial. It stands for Joseph. Did you know that? No. Such a and, um, you did that the other night. <laughs> Stupid. But I Solaris was always like my gaming name, and I haven't gamed in a really really long time, and I've had that name since I was probably like, gosh, fifteen since, or sixteen years old. It was yeah, before was we say, even met. Yeah, before we met. Yeah. So um, I thought it was time to become an adult. Become an adult. So this way it's easier for you all to follow me if you wanted to or to like know like who's a Solaris person. So you know who Ray is, right? I'm Ray. <laughs> it's me. Um, so I changed my name there and I changed my name on Ravelry as well just to keep it easier. Um, and then we're starting a Discord server. We haven't, we've just kind of put it all together with the help of, well, Star offered to help us. So we're going to probably reach out to you. Sorry. Hello. Um, hi, Star. Hi, Star. And um, we're going to have that going for another alternative to like Ravelry, another way that we can kind of interact and chat because we find that we do love chatting with everybody, but Ravelry makes it very it difficult it to it do very that difficult. and it's not accessible to everyone. So the cool thing about Discord, if you haven't already um, tried it out, is that there's a mobile app as well as a com- as a you can access it via the computer as well. And it's easy for us to see and post back and forth. Uh, we all pretty much have smartphones now. So it'll be kind of a cool way, another way, an alternative way to to interact with us. So, what did you change your Ravelry name to? Because I tried changing mine to match my Instagram, and I can't because it has you can't put the periods in. So okay. it's just Ray J Nitz. Okay. Without the um the gotcha. periods. All right. Yeah, yeah. I have. To, I was looking into changing mine last night, and I saw that, and I was like, oh man. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Who knows? It's nice to kind of have it all at one. Yeah, I would really thing. like to have everything yeah. Um, cohesive. Yeah. Plus, Ray J sounds kind of cool. I remember when I was. A, I'm not going to share the story. No, Go. I will. So when I was a kid, I, we used to love watching WWF wrestling. Remember that? Yeah. With like the whole, like the old one. It's so Hulk funny. I just, had, I just had a conversation at work about this. The you other did. Day. Yeah. And so we had these old school stuff, guys. So we had these wrestle wrestle buddies. Do you guys remember wrestle buddies? Weren't they pillows? Yeah, they were like pillows in the shape of like Yes. And they would stand like this. Yes. And um my wrestler name was Ray J. And I thought it was cool. And I remember like my parents had the obviously the big bed. And <laughs> I would like run run in with the and be like, Here comes Ray J you know, like stupid kid. And grab my my wrestle pal or wrestle buddy or whatever it was and um you know, like body slam, slam him. Yeah, on the on the bed. Anyway, who was your favorite wrestler? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, it was Hulk Hogan. And then I tr- because then Hulk Hogan became everybody's favorite. So then I tried to like find other favorites. So I liked the war- uh, Ultimate Warrior, Warrior. Uh huh. And then Million Dollar Man. And then once him and Virgil kind of like split up, and Virgil went his own way, I was like, ah, I'm not into this anymore. Okay. Yeah. I also loved who were who were the I know who you're gonna say tag team. Hart Brothers? No, though I didn't like them. Oh I did like them. No, Hart I didn't Brothers. like them at all. Um I think they intimidated me a little bit. I liked the the ones with the spikes. They would wear the spikes, the oh, something I don't, brothers. I don't know. Oh, I'll have to remember. If you guys know, please comment that down below. There were two they were the tag team people and they had like they wore like red and black and they had these like spikes coming out of them and stuff oh i can't picture it actually. yeah it was I really can't. cool and then i feel like there was anyway and would they do this like on their head Didn't i don't know because do i don't remember them oh. All but right. the f- comment below if you know but we we're talking about that because my current manager his mother is like a huge wrestling fan and mm. watches every single acronym for wrestling wwe now yeah. right and every other thing that you can think of. And I told her, I was like, oh, well, we have WWE headquarters is in Stanford. Right. So it's, you know, maybe a half an hour from us. 
So she travels in often. I said she should go. Yeah, but to do what? I think it's just offices. You can't really do anything. There. No, don't. Isn't that where they film it? I think they film it in Stanford. Yeah, but I don't think you can like go in and. You can go to a wrestling match. There's people in the audience. Maybe. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was thinking. So we talked about the Discord. We talked about the make along. Talked about your name change. Is that it? For that's, it. that's enough. Stuff? Okay, yeah. I think that's it. All right, so we have um, a couple of FOs. We have some whips. FOs, <laughs> whips. We I have, have a hoe. I have some yarn dyeing to show. I have a what am I wearing? I have a... You do. Let's speak of what you're wearing. Please okay. Please tell the people. This is the Painting Honeycombs shawl. It's the small version by Stephen West. This is knit out of Nancy uh, Trilogy Yarns from uh, from Nancy. This is her Halloween advent from last year and i used i talked about this obviously on podcasts past Oops, sorry shaking i hit shaking the table and moving with my leg but the the main color was the the 100 gram skein although i did sneak in about a quarter of a second skein that nancy was kind enough to to dye me and then i just i just randomly placed the minis but I like it. I think it it looks it looks kind of spookyish almost. Like it's it's perfect for tomorrow's Halloween. And then I'm also wearing my uh, one of my sockhead slouch hats by Kelly McClure. And this is knit in Malabrigo Machetta. I can't remember the color name. And what's the day after Halloween? Our anniversary. It is. Do you have something for me? Is that what you're reaching for? No. Oh. <laughs> So I'm not as prepared as I thought I was, so I'm getting some stuff that I need to speak about. Okay, good. That's all I have to say, so get get together. All right, so I have an FO that I can finally spend some time talking about. You guys have seen it in pictures. I talked about it briefly in the live, but I finally finished my Rhinebeck sweater, which is the (laughs) Ivon. This is by Veronique Avery. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. It is a three-quarter length sleeve cardigan, no buttons. It is a pieced yeah. sweater. So I've knit this out of Simply Wool Twist. So this is by Knit Picks. It is a worsted weight yarn and pattern. This is um, Wordsworth and Wanda. And it was 218 yards for 100 grams. And I have two skeins left over. I think I bought 10 because I think it was like a sweater's quantity. If you buy this in a pack of 10, it's a little cheaper than buying just, say, six or seven skeins. Right, right. So I do have two full skeins left. And I know of the other skeins, I only had like a little ball left of each one. I didn't have much because I used a lot of the leftovers to seam this. Yeah. So I'm going to... What a difference. Like it It is it's it seems like it's getting softer and softer the more that you're wearing it. I, that's actually a really good point. I was going to say that. So oh, sorry. No, you're fine. That's what we're here to do is talk about some knitting. Talk about the knitting. Alright, so I'm just gonna stand up and show the length of it so you guys kinda have an idea. So hopefully it shows. I may have to stand on the chair. Please don't do that. Just Let's step see. back a little bit. I am stepping back. Oh, oh, we should have turned um, Do Not Disturb on. Oh. Can Kevin, that, can please. You see the length? Yes, you can see the length. You could right. see this length when you were regular, when you're standing regularly. If you fall down and take all our yarn with, our, with you, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. So it does go, it is quite long. I think the finish measurement, would 31 inches make sense? Or does that, or was it longer? Either way, it is long. It's super cozy. It looks super, super cozy. It has, I want to say, 10 to like 16 inches of positive ease. Mm -hmm. I knit the third size, which was a 38 to 42 inch chest. I did go down a needle size. The recommended needles were... I do remember that. You said that, yeah. What were the recommended? It's right here. Um, so the recommended needles were, was a 4.5 millimeter, a US 7 mm-hmm. for the main fabric. The ribbing was a US 6. And then the tubular cast on was a US 5. 
So I know I did a six for my body for the main fabric and I did a five and then a four. So I went down a needle size on each recommended size. Right. If you guys remember when I knit the panel, the front panels. You did a really good job piecing that together. You can't even like see what you did. So when I knit the front panels, I had a lot, or I had to adjust my stitch count or my row count. Mm -hmm. I had a stop. I think it was like 17 rows and I stopped at nine rows. And I had a, but I didn't take that into account when I knit my armhole. So I followed the pattern for the armhole. And what I ran into is my armhole was much larger than the number of stitches I had for my sleeve. Right. Because the knee, the sleeve is knit flat and then joined here. So this is a crescent sleeve. So it makes this really I love fun, this little detail. It's detail, really detail, cool. Which I am really happy with. You talked about that on the last podcast, how you reached out to them. Correct. I reached out to okay. Brooklyn Tweed because I couldn't figure out how to do it. And it wasn't their fault. It was mine. I didn't read the pattern. It was user I error. literally didn't read about five words. I just must have brushed over it and... It didn't make sense to me. So I reached out to them. They were great. They didn't call you dumb. No, they sent me a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me a drawing to show me how to do it. It took, still took me a, a bit of two tries to get it. But so here it is on this side. It's neat. It's really neat. The It is a mattress stitch seeming here. Three needle bind off up here. Mattress seamed this. So this is my first time doing an inset sleeve, guys. I think that's what it's called. So what I did to fix or compensate, compensate for the extra stitches. For the extra stitches is when I was doing the mattress seaming, I would pick up two to three stitches on the armhole from the body to one stitch on the sleeve just to try to spread them out so it's a little bulky here but you can't really tell honestly mm. no you really can't you, like you can see it's raised slightly when you're pulling it like that maybe but, but it's like, not yeah normal way it's you not bad yeah. we're on this side yeah no, i good. oh and something i have to do so you fold over this band oh you haven't done that yet no, it doesn't actually... Do you actually, feel like you need to? It doesn't actually call for it in the pattern. It gives you two options. The uh -huh. first option is just to do a whip stitch down here. And that's all I did. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of loose, and I don't mind it, but I may tack it down. I'm not sure yet. I don't know if you need to. I think it adds a little bit... Like, you can see how it kind of bubbles up a little bit. And yeah. I kind of like that, because it almost looks like it's a border in a way. It is thick, and so back here for the neck, oh, cool. You do the same thing with your border. So you're actually mattress st stitching three sections together. Mm -hmm. The neck you fold in half and mattress stitch that to the shoulder, the area in between the shoulders. Mm. So that was a little bit tricky to try to figure out, but I, I mean, got it. It's an advanced pattern. It is an advanced pattern. It does pattern. say that it's advanced. So congratulations. You did a great job. I was very proud of you. Thank you. And you like persevered, like yes, you know, this, when you got confused or things didn't go your way. I will say there's a couple things. I'm surprised that more people haven't knit this. Maybe it's because it's an advanced pattern. Maybe. But I think the fit of this is so beautiful. Especially like the way that we like, like to wear things I, around the house and be I, like cozy and snuggly. Yeah, it's a cozy sweater. Mm -hmm. Um and I've easy been to wearing throw the on. crap yeah, out of it. Exactly. I've been wearing it so much. It has this yarn is a woolly wool. It's non superwash, so right. it is a little scratchy. If you don't like the scratchiness on like your neck or your arms, it does soften up mm -hmm. as you wear it. Like initially, for me, because I think it's almost felting. A no, it's bit. not felting. It's you know what? Like in too? a good way. It's not even pilling, and I've worn this a yeah, lot. I have. was concerned about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, here's my seams. I don't know. You can't see them. But I think it's such a great sweater. Me too. This is what I wanted my simple hug to be that I knit from Cozy Up. Granted, I altered that and made it long sleeve. 
and it was knit on a much larger gauge yeah. with with a DK weight. So and it was like something like size eleven needles or something like that. I think right? it was tens, Oof. something like that. This is exactly what I wanted that to be, though. Right. I couldn't be happier with the outcome of this sweater. Um, Everything it, is great from the color choice that you that you made. Yeah, I I just think it's such a a perfect yeah like house coat. It's so I I'm so incredibly happy with it. Um, I would totally knit it again. Yeah. I would knit it again with. I, I think it would be cool to knit it with shelter, which it's meant to be knit with, because wow. it would be lighter and airier but this isn't heavy no it's by not any heavy. means uh-uh. so i highly recommend this guys if you are looking for an oversized cardigan to just kind of wear around the house yeah i might, would what are you going to do with your extras i don't know i have two skeins it would be cool if it had pockets and what it reminds me of i don't like you so isabella and megan both have always worn like cardigans when they come over yeah like this time of year yeah. and that was kind of what i wanted like just something that you could throw on when you're hanging on the couch and reading a book or mm-hmm. watching a movie today's a perfect day because it's rainy and cloudy and you want to just like snuggle up i know so we've so got thrilled. things to do today we do we have a busy day do we have a busy day we we've have got a busy ba- day. Ba- ba- bingo later we do um the fire so yes. hustle fellas this sweater is fantastic i would highly recommend it don't be scared of seaming if you haven't done it. Um, I'm still scared. Mattress stitch is one of my... I love doing it. It was funny because when you were doing it, Kevin kept saying, um, oh my God, this is like magic. It like, is. I love this. It's such a magical thing. Yeah. So that's my only FO. All right. I have... Um... Do you think I should enter it in Happy Knits? Yeah. <laughs> what would she do, you think? <laughs> that ended in like August. It sure did. Um, I have... Not weaved in, woven in my ends. Um, and this was, this was finished quite a while ago as, speaking of fiber hustle, as part of their dishcloth revolution. And in my head, I had every intention of being a, a part of that revolution. And I stalled out a little bit. So I chose Dishy Twist by Nitpicks. It's in their mulberry colorway. Mulberry? Mulber. Mulberry. It's one of my... Dishy Twist, I said this, I yeah. think, last time, is my... Out of all the dish pick... Dishy. Nit, nitpicks. Nitpicks, dishy. Dishy Twist is my favorite feel once it's knit and washed. Yes. The pattern that I, yo- that I chose... Yoast. ...was um, the traditional dish cloth. By Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. All of the other dishcloths that we've done is a variation on this pattern, um, but I didn't, we've always I've always done the ones without the holes. So I was like, let me just do it part of the pattern, and then you can see that there are two different sizes that you can do, and I thought these were kind of cool. So I did one of each. I mean, it's a dishcloth, so I won't go too much into it, but this is one here. Which is a great size. That I have seems to say. a little large too. I know, but I love it. But it's gonna shrink a little bit, you know, once it gets wet. Yeah, it does and, shrink. Like or just dry a bit. wet and dried. I haven't like wet these at all. But I love like the fabric is nice. It's very soft, but it also has like that because it's um it's garter. It's, it's a good it's a good yarn. It's for... a great yarn great. Great yarn. And it's very affordable as well. And then I did a matching little face cloth too. Nice. Yeah. My intention was to, I have, I think I brought down a few of these with the intentions of knitting. I think that was last year, maybe 2020, right towards the end. Yeah. So, um, that's what do I some do. more. I'm going to do some more. I'm going to weave in my ends. You can typically get from the larger size, I believe you can typically get three dish claws that size from a ball of dishy. I, I want to get one more of these and two more of these. Okay. Because I think it would, I don't know if I'll have enough yarn. I didn't weigh, you know, I didn't weigh this, which I probably should do. But how cool, wouldn't that be a nice little set? You get two of these and three of these little guys. Or two and two, even. Oh yeah, two and two. Yeah. I like odd numbers. Why? I, I know. love even numbers. When I know, but when, I think when like, when decorating and when like giving a gift and like presentation, I think odd numbers are more popular or like they look better aesthetically i feel like i've read that so 
decorating i i can see that having three different size candles yeah right? pillar candles sure some so i can see it in decorating but that's it well because my like, you my don't want intention... to eat three cookies you either want to eat two or four correct right or 12 but my intention is like to make the like display them nice do you know what i mean like as a gift like if you i say you know if we roll up a couple of these and then i don't know okay make a little bouquet all right martha stewart yeah well we'll see that's those are you know we obviously see have seen how well i revolutionized the dishcloth the you dish did cloths. a beautiful job thanks but, uh, I li- I have no. Those idea. are my intentions. Okay. That's my one fo. All right, moving right along into some whips. Oops. I do have a Let's... hoe. Oh, go ahead. Talk about your hoe. Okay. You all have seen this a few times. Um, I was hoping to have it all finished, but I did not because I just hadn't had. Much Isn't that time. your hoe over there? It is, but I'm just getting things prepared, so it'll be easier for me to to show trying to multitask a little bit this is knit with the unique sock unique sock i think that's what it's called it comes in a box i don't remember the name of it um i think it's a couple episodes ago i will try eventually to get a project page together i might have started a project page probably not and this is what this is what it is so i wanted to knit the le- I did these toe up. I wanted to knit the leg as long as I could so that I can capture all of the colors. But then it just started getting a little bit um, ridiculous. And I would have had to increase, like done some increases to get over my calf. So I stopped here. These are all of the colors. Uh, these are all, this is what I have left. Oh, good. So you did I did, pretty, you yep, did a good job with yep. that. Then. So I got all of the colors in there. And I just did my ribbing in these last little bit of the yellow. I love this straight there, the yellow Isn't and the that orange. Fun? That would be fun in a hat. Just I that, agree. if that was a full skein. Yeah, I, really I totally like agree. Same. So um, what I did, and then this is my second one. So I was doing them in tandem. Kind of. So I did toe up. I used the Norwegian cast on. Was it Turkish? Turkish cast on. Okay. For I'm just trying to travel the globe. The Turkish cast on for the toe. And uh, I did for my size 12. For me, it was, I think I just, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, 80 rows? 80 rows for my foot. Then I did a fish lips kiss heel. And then I'm just going to knit up until I hit that, that row here. And then that one last row of like silvery gray. What would you call that? Gray. Yeah. And then I'll start my ribbing. So nice. it should hopefully match up because everything else is matched up so far. The striping on that's great. Isn't it it's fun? A, yeah, it's Because it's, really like it's like a fa- like stripes and a fade. It's oh, it's almost a double fade. Yeah. So it's, really neat. Yeah, because you have... No, I'm just trying to see. You have the... Is it a double fade? You have the fade from dark green to light green. Then you have your light green and your brown. Your brown... To like this baby. No, your green goes into blue. Your brown goes into orange. Then your orange goes into yellow. Your purpley goes into gray. So yeah, it's a double fade. Cool, right? Yeah, super cool. Um, I the the finished fabric feels really really nice and soft. Knitting with it, I did have a lot of trouble because I found the yarn still very splitty. Um, I'm doing these on my nine inch circular needles do you know what ply how many plies the yarn is is it like a two ply three I think ply a, four no can i see your little ball yeah i think it's a two ply because two plies would be more likely to split no this is actually uh almost maybe an eight ply oh six. i don't know it was it's very it was i found it very splitty and i used my chow goose which I usually don't have a lot of trouble with. A lot of you did comment that you you found the yarn splitty as well. But I do love the fabric. I think the fabric is going to be really nice on my um, on my foot. This fits me very, very well. So I'm really happy that I did that. And I love the colors. One, two. I would definitely knit another sock, I think. It's a four-ply. 
Before play? Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was pretty splitty. I did not do a stretchy bind off on the cuff. I just did I just bound off in pattern um loose. It does it goes over my foot, but I have to be a little bit gentle with it. If that makes sense. But it fits me fine and then it sits it sits fine on my leg. Who just Michael for piece for piece is knitting toe up for the first time and he said he was gonna Oh, Try dude. a different type of Jenny's bind. No, stretchy he, bind off. No, because that flares. Oh yeah, there was some. So there was something else he was going to mm-hmm. try. So maybe like on his next episode, we'll talk yeah. about it, and you could try that on a future. I part. know people, and I've done, I've done um, that bind off, and I know that people are uncomfortable with like the flaring. It only looks silly when you're not wearing it. When you're wearing it, it doesn't flare out. It, right. It, it's 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 fine. So it looks just normal. You it's could, just when you put it on something like this to show it off, or you're just holding up the sock, it it you know it flares. But when you're wearing it, it doesn't. I wonder if you did like a double cuff and folded it. I would love to do that one day. It in on itself and yeah. stitched it together. It'd be a little more elastic, mm-hmm. and maybe it would hold its shape better. Yeah, I would love to do that. And these this is living in my um, knit for brains sock sack, which I love. Yeah, those are great. Harry Potter um, one. It's one of our first. And she's doing a lot of sewing now too. Oh, she's I doing know. it own, like full time, so she has tons of bags. She sure does. So we'll have her link down below. We will. Knit for Brains Designs on Etsy. Okay. That's our friend Laura. Laura and Laura. Karen. And Karen. Karen. All right. I'm up. You're up. All right. I have. A whip. Ooh. I have. Oh, God, um, this yarn, Kevin. That yarn is gorgeous. I know. So we're going to talk about that because I have an idea about this yarn now. Okay. All right. So, I am knitting a sock that's living in my Lila Styles bag. I Gryffindor. love this. Oh, I have. One. I'm using one of those. We brought bags these. Too. Yeah, we brought these to Rhinebeck with the intentions like we might knit and we. Yeah, never thinking, did. but yeah. But this is a great like, velvety on the outside, embroidered. And then inside, it has the stained glass. This is one of my favorite Harry that. Potter fabrics. Me too. That I've seen. Yeah, and it's got all the houses. Yeah. Yeah. So I am using yarn from Lolo Did It. This is the Downton Abbey Club, upstairs and downstairs, August 2020. This one, the main color is called Only Girl in the World. I'm going to start singing now. So I decided to cast on a sock because I needed something small. Yeah. So here's the yarn caked up. Kev, it's so gorgeous. It's blues and greens and, you know, whites, some red speckles, maybe some orange in there. There's some gray in there. There's gray. There's yeah. brown. So here it is. I'm just doing a vanilla sock. I cast on 68 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. My Chagu Red Lace. I did a two by two. I did a two by two twisted rib. Oh, I love the twisted rib. I don't think I've ever done a two by two twisted rib. I think I did on a different pair of socks. Oh, yeah? So I love the way this is knitting up. Me too. So much so that I'm thinking about taking it out and making a hat. That's going to make a cool hat. It'll pull differently with the hat because it will have a different amount of stitches. I almost feel like it might be a little more stripey if yeah, I do a hat. I agree. I think it'll be nice and stripey. So, but I don't know because I'm almost at the point of the I heel. Don't, no, I don't. Mm, maybe because I do seven inches before I start my heel, so I might be close to that. Well, so here's the thing: you you can't get this color again. I know. So if I mean, I think it'll be a cool hat. But I also don't have a lot of socks. I can and then here years. would be my heels and toes. Which is gorgeous, too. And this one is called Wonderful Things. Yeah. This one's 85.15, and this one, I believe, is 80.20. No, it should be the same. I think that's her base is 85.15. Yeah, it's 85.15. Yeah. It just feels different. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I do love the way that it's knitting up. It's really interesting how the pooling of the brown tan section happens a lot on this side and not so much on that side it's a little bit shorter so i don't know what i'm gonna it's do. cool because you have pooling and micro stripes like all in, all in one yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do yet oh, I, I do love, love it though i do, I do love the way that this is knitting up i love yeah. the colors and if you were to do a hat what would you do i actually thought about holding it double in doing a lyle cap 
So holding it double is probably... Oh, with itself? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. That would be nice. Then you definitely won't have pooling then. I know. Yeah. I just have to see. I'll have to weigh a Lyle cap and see how many grams it is. Mm -hmm. To figure out. But So we'll see. We'll see. I just needed something super simple. Yeah. And I know this comes up often. So people ask sometimes... Um, what vanilla like what pattern oh. so when we're saying vanilla Thank or anybody i didn't talk about talks about yeah. vanilla it's a non-pattern sock and it's just something that as a sock it could that, be a pattern it could have some ribbing or something like that if that's your vanilla well typically typically vanilla is no pattern right nothing. just stocking it like even there's the vanilla latte socks which is i think like a three by one rib mm-hmm which is still kind of vanilla-ish, but mm-hmm. m- most of the time when somebody says they're knitting a vanilla sock, it's a non-pattern sock. It's just going in the round, round and round, following a recipe that fits for them. So they found how many stitches they like to cast on, right. what their length is, the heel that they like to use, length of their foot, and then their toe. Right. So Vanilla when, in this case meaning plain. Kind yeah, of. That, that's yeah. all it is. Just plain. Just a plain yeah, old plain sock. Plain and simple. So we'll see. Um, I do enjoy knitting socks. I realize I don't have a lot of them because I tend to knit on, I guess, larger projects sometimes. I just love having socks on the knees. I do like having them. I just don't have them often enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm really trying to make an effort to have them more because I don't mind wearing them in the summer. I don't find that my feet get incredibly warm if I'm wearing them to work or Mm -hmm. I find them easier in like. Not in sneakers, but in more, like, dressy shoes. Well, even in sneakers, I mean, as long as you have enough, like, nylon or something, if you're going to wear them out, like, in sneakers, like, or a a yarn that's not going to break easily, it's good because it wicks away the moisture. It's, like, it's got... uh, Wool wool be really nice, even in the summertime. I was going to say, even... Like a light wool. During the summer, I wear socks all the time. I I don't. I always have shorties on. So I think that's another thing I need to start doing is Mm -hmm. knitting myself more shorties. Well, I think I would wear those a lot more than a full length sock. Yeah. My, um, that's why I knit my last pair of shorties because I realized when we were doing, I think when we were doing the knit in public day Mm -hmm. that I didn't have any knit socks to wear because all of mine were full length, you know, full length. Yeah. Or three quarter of a length. So that is whip number one. Cool. Vanilla socks. And my vanilla sock is I seven I'm seventy two stitches on uh uh US two point two five millimeter needle. Why do I feel like we have a US one and that's what your seventy two stitches are? I've with? never done one on a US one. I would like to try. Okay. But I never did. Uh do you want me to go next? Yeah, you go next. This is in my bag. This is more of a the leather we want. Of course I'm a Hufflepuff. Same interior fabric, which is gorge. And this, I decided to jump on the bandwagon with everybody else, and I am knitting the Muscleboro hat. Muscleboro. Now, people have been saying Muscleberg, and we've always said Muscleberg as well. We do. Did some. What? No, go ahead. Oh. Did some research, and we were watching. Jonathan. Jonathan From over Jonathan at. Jonathan Days. Jonathan Days um, podcast. And. He had mentioned that he thinks it's Muscleboro instead of Muscleberg. So looking it up, it is Muscleboro. It's actually right outside of Edinburgh in Scotland. So it is a town, a city in Scotland. I think it's the largest one in that county or whatever. So if Edinburgh is Edinburgh and not Edinburgh, (laughs) then Muscleboro is Muscleboro and not Muscleberg. So, we are going to be now calling this the Muscleboro Hat. It eeps, I keep wanting to say, like, Cuckooboro sits in the old gum tree, you know? No, but it's not. I don't know that song. No? No. Am I the only one? Did I make that up? You make up songs. I do make up songs. It, but I don't think that that's me. I think that there's a real uh, a real thing. So, I uh, everybody has knit this. There, It's, like, everywhere. I haven't. Um... I haven't either. This is my first time. But it's it's everywhere. There's been a lot of people knitting this and talking about this. Uh, and I, I'm i going to try it. So, go ahead. I was going to say, now I kind of want to. We watched um, Chevis last yeah. night. 
She's for knitting Chevy one for everybody. Rell stuff, and she was knitting one for her nephew. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God, that's such a smart Christmas gift. And we always knit hats, yeah. hats for the kids. Mm-hmm. So I thought last night, oh, should we do that? So I may jump on the bandwagon. I don't know, though. Yeah. I'm happy that I did jump on the bandwagon. I will tell you, uh, let's let's talk about what I've got going on. So I'm knitting this out of Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock. This is in the Fauna, Fauna colorway. I got this at Webb's when we went to... No. No, that's a lie. I got this at Knit New Haven. I loved it. And I've never tried Sweet Georgia before. It is... 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's 425 yards in 115 grams, which is really interesting. I don't know if I'll have enough. I'm sure I will. You sh- should. I, I think it takes a full it's, skein. It's pretty long, but this is what I have so far. Not much. Um, I have a little cup now. It is, for those of you who don't know what this is, um, it's knit from the top down. Uh, and then it's like a tube and then you decrease down and you kind of wear it inside out, like inside of itself. So I think I have a picture. Yeah. So it's no ribbing or anything. It's just kind of knit and folded in on itself. You can, you can knit up the... Is hers folded up? Yeah. So it's inside and then folded up again. So on the outside. Yeah. So okay. what you're what you can do, you can wear it fold it up like say this will fold up on itself. You can wear it like that or you can fold it another time and have like four layers of knitted fabric on your ears to be even extra warm. Not not before seaming, just like making it into a beanie. You right? Is that what you're saying? What? <laughs> I got it though. Can do you really? Have yeah. No, I okay. Do. Um, <laughs> what size are you knitting? Okay. So I am doing the large. I started off with the medium. And then Chevis was saying that that's even small for her head. And I'm, I'm sure I have a larger dome than Chevis does. So what I ended up doing was just kind of t- sneaking in a couple of increases. Um, after I was like, this looks a little bit small. I will tell you that I, I did the pinhole cast on thing. I, I couldn't figure it out, and I know people were struggling, so I just crocheted. So I just did a, a magic ring with crochet. I think you start with eight stitches. I know it's a paid-for pattern, but that's all I'll tell you. And then you start increasing uh, the way that you did. So I did a, a magic ring, crochet, and did my eight stitches, and then I had them on uh, magic loop, and I just increased until I got to the number that I needed, and then I moved them onto my 16-inch circular needles. This is the Chowgu interchangeable set, um, the four-inch tips, and then you use the cord, you know, the interchangeable. I think what I'm going to do is order a fixed circular. Yeah. I have a hard time. I think it's it's me, but like right, this is the length um, before the cord, and four inches is is not that doesn't seem like it's that long but when you're knitting this i'm I'm having trouble because it's not as flexible i have to find that i have to move my stitches a lot um a lot more interesting yeah because i don't mind knitting on a 16 inch circular needle i like a i like i think i i think i would rather fix circulars um when i I, when i'm knitting on my on my hat although now it's going smoothly i wouldn't be surprised if we have a fixed addies yes but I knit my sock head slouches on a three millimeter. This is a US three, which is I think three point five millimeter needles, uh, I don't or know. something okay. like that. No, but I would. Th- I I'm pretty sure we would have a fix. A three point two five. Three point two. We don't have no because we had to order the um. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I do like it, and I the yarn is like super easy to manipulate and get around now i just want to like knit on this this is nice but i do i'm, I'm gonna get a fixed circular so that's the muscle burrow muscle burr muscle burrow burrow <laughs> hat 
And I love what it's doing. It's not like pooling or yeah, anything. Yeah, I, I like the way that that's new. Yeah, out. it reminds me of fall. I was just going to say the same thing. It reminds me of... Like a pumpkin latte or pumpkin pie with lots and lots of ice cream. I feel like cream. it would be a the colors that you would see on a fall-themed table yeah. for dinner on mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. So that's that. Okay. That's what I have there. So my next project, y'all, is living in my fringe supply bag. That no longer has these bags, unfortunately. No, it's a shame. So I decided to cast on another sock. This sock is a DK sock, which I'm actually wearing right now, too. Using, oh, you're wearing your DK socks? Yeah, and I'm using... I'm wearing my Coffee Talk socks. The the socks that I'm wearing, it's the same pattern that I'm currently knitting. And I will say, these are actually quite loose. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. So, I am knitting the... Oh, this is a great colorway, too. This colorway is so freaking good, y'all. Um, I am knitting oh. the Spree Socks by, I believe it's Kemper Ray. I have it right here. Here we go. So, yes, Kemper Ray, Junkyard Designs, mm. Spree Socks. It's a free pattern. Oh, it, is it really? Yeah, it's a DK weight. I am... you. It's um, it actually DK and a worsted weight pattern in here. Oh, nice. So I think it's free. <laughs> yeah, let me look mm. it up because I don't own it. So it is knit using a US 3 or a 3.25 millimeter and a US 4. That's the 3. size I'm doing 3.5 millimeter here. needles. I am knitting the medium, which is 48 stitches. And I'm knitting mine out of To The Max Yarn Co. It is free. With the colorway Meddling Kids. This is the DK Weight sock set. It was 80% Superwash Merino, 20% nylon. Oh, I'm going to copy you. So the main skein is 100 grams for 274 yards. The minis, that's right, two, is... 20 grams for 55 yards. So here is the sock and the main color. Wow, it's so fun. So this is Meddling Kids. Oh my gosh. Is the body. This is one mini. So I use this for my cuff. Lovely. I'm going to use mini number two for my heels and my toes. I think I'm at the point for my heels. That's why I stopped this. This should be seven inches now. Okay. So I just love the way that this is knitting up. Me too. So it's a Scooby-Doo reference, Metal and Kids. Scooby-Dooby-Doo. So it has, I would say the colors of the van, right? Mm, No. The green from the van, the orange. Or is this colors of what they wear? It might be colors. uh, So. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's such a great color. Maybe it is. Every time I I knit this, I just love all the. The way the colors play together. And yeah, it just knits up really quick. I think I knit this in like a day, maybe two most. I haven't knit it much. Oh, yeah, it's it the van. totally is the van. Right? Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Right, the orange, you have your blue, <gasps> Look how perfect teal, that is. gray for the wheels, your Shut yellow, the front door. green. <gasps> and then this one here kind of reminds me of... Um, Great job. Yeah, I love the brown in this. Wow. It's a really, really good on. Yeah, great colorway. And yeah, so I'm doing 48 stitches on, I'm currently now on my US 4s, doing a magic loop. Mm -hmm. And am I using, I think I'm using 5 inch tips. Yeah, they look like 5 inches, yeah. Yeah, 5 inch tips this way that I don't really have to fuss with the yarn once it's on the needles. Right. And I did a 2 by 2 rib. For my cuff. Beautiful. And I did, I want to say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Ten rows. And I think that's actually what the pattern calls for. All right. So ten rows. It gets you about an inch and a half. And then the rest until I got to seven inches. And now I'm ready for my heel, which I will do a heel flap and gusset Okay. for this. The pattern actually calls for a heel flap and gusset. And... I will go to the coffee talk pattern because I'm adding a contrasting color for the heel. Mm-hmm. 
that's the pattern I go to. That one and my Wonderland socks by um, oh, Matt Akers. Matt, yeah. Those are the two heels that I use because they both use contrasting colors for mm-hmm. their heel flap and gusset. Yeah. So I kind of follow their instructions. Because where... they add one extra step. Yeah. Then a regular that makes it heel easier. flap. So yeah. it makes it um, easier for me to remember what to do. And to join that yarn and all that. So you don't have those holes. I will say, if you've never done a heel flap before, this is actually a really good way to do it because your heel's so short. Yeah. You're only doing it for like 11 or 13 repeats. Mm-hmm. It's like somewhere between there instead of the 30 something I think that you need for a fingering weight yeah. one. So it would be a good time to try a heel flap and gusset. And that was whip number two. I have one whip left. What about you? I have one whip left as well. And okay. it's the Stephen West. Right. So we both have the same whip. So it is the shawlography. So if you do not want to see it. I mean, the so the last clue came out yesterday. It did. Um, so the pattern is now officially released. So I don't know if spoilers are still a thing. But if it is and you do not want to see, probably going to be talking a little bit a little bit about it because I'm I'm quite proud of some of the techniques that we've like we've done and your yarn that you chose is divine well thank you sir divine um do you want to go first you want me to go first no you go first all right so this is living in um yarn creatives bucket that we've shown before, which is the most awesome bag because it's got, I'm trying not to show like the project. It's got a handle and then the inside comes out like this on a drawstring. So you could really pack the yarn in here. Um, So this is Yarn Creative. All right, let's see if, let's see what I can pull out. Should I do the yarn first yeah do your yarn first okay show them the yarn now show me the money i did show off the i I did show off these yarns when i first chose when i first chose what i was going to do i picked out my colors really really quickly um so color a is this beautiful yellow this is all really using my quotable Dumbledore's Club with the exception of one skein of yarn. So this is in Caution. Um, these are all 85 15, 85% Merino, 15% Nylon. So that's Caution, that's A. B is this awesome blue. And this is in Bravery. So what I did was I, I kept them in plastic bags because I didn't have enough yarn condoms for them or yarn sacks, ball sacks for them. So uh, I marked them and I left them in the the bag so I can see. So this is uh, Bravery. Did I say Barley? No, you said Bravery. Okay, good. Um, That was B. C. No. Oh, I messed up. That was C. B is this color. This is Rusted. This is by um, Leading Men Fiber Arts in their Show Stealer base. This is a different base. This is uh, an 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. And this is in the color Rusted. So that's that color. And then D is this beautiful, like, bluish gray. It's a really pretty one. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. This is called Magic. And then last is E, which I also love. And this is called Muggle Magazine. That's a really nice one. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So, with their powers combined, I have a very bright shawl. <laughs> Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting um, has similar colors to me. And he said that his shawl reminds him of, like, Big Top, like the cir- like Big Top Circus. If his is, like, Big Top, mine is, like, Giant Top or whatever. It. I think mine are very circusy, and it's a lot of colors. So y'all ready? Let's see if I can get this. There's a lot of stitches here. Whoa! Hello. Okay. So, get the needle. Yeah. All right. So this is 
this is it. I'm sure, you know, if I, if you haven't seen this, um, it starts with this little, like, lacy pattern. I don't even know what you would call it. Really fun fan work here where you can see all the colors. That's going to open up really, really nicely. I love, this is my favorite, I think. One of my favorite sections is here with these elongated uh, Vs, slip stitches. It just, it stripes those colors even more. These are the shrimps that somebody was saying here. Um, I, I just, I love this. Now, this is where, this is where things were like, okay, this is might be a little bit outside my comfort zone that I've never done before. I've slipped stitches before. This is pretty much all that this is. It's very easy to do. Um, and then only when you get to here, I think, um, this little section was a little bit different, but we, I've done an I-chord before. Yeah, that's just I-chord yeah. loops. But it's when it got here that I was like, okay, I'm outside my comfort zone. So I look at, I did little bobbles there. That was fun. These are these uh, wedges that the like welts. welts. Sorry, thank you. That pop up. Um, so you had to pick up stitches from the back of the fabric. And I'll show you the back of the fabric because it was, I think it's really, really cool. Then, um, then you get back to like these wedges, like uh, short rows yep. here. Oh, and, oh yeah, this is brioche. Little brioche. I did some brioche. It looks good. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm a convert. I love. I think the brioche is so much fun. I was very scared of it, but. Steven West videos, and I'm gonna actually save that video because I want to do uh, I want to do brioche all the time. Um, so I I'm gonna save that video because he does such a great job explaining it. Yeah, that it took the fear away from me. I this I feel the same way. I watched that video and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. that's doable. Yeah, totally took the fear away. It's hard to um to see. So now. I want to show you. It's over here. Okay. So I made a big mistake. It's actually not as bad now no, as I, it was before. Yeah. I think I, so fixed, I fixed it. You you corrected some of it. It wouldn't. It needs you... a little bit more TLC, I think. But I'm I'm probably just going to leave it. So um, brioche is really, it's not hard. It's not. I'm just going to throw it out there. Brioche is not hard. Do not be afraid of brioche. Even if you didn't knit this shawl and you didn't care about watching the videos, I would go to Stephen West's Clue 3 yeah. and save that in your favorites because the techniques that he shows are not just applicable to this shawl. And how he explains the brioche um, is just yeah easy. I agree. It, it makes it so easy. So um, I ended up dropping a stitch. So with brioche, obviously you all know, but there are these these columns of stitches right here and then the back is it's reversible so it's probably easier to see the columns of stitches on this side so i dropped i dropped one of the stitches i didn't realize that i dropped the stitch until a little bit later i was like oh crap what do i do and i was like say yes don't stress right so i um i tried picking it up and i know how to correct a drop stitch in regular knitting so i'm thinking in my head like okay this is how you do it let me pick up the bar i had my little crochet hook and I did it, and it looked fine. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I carried on. And then it wasn't until I knit, until last night, after I knit a, a bunch more, that I realized I did not fix the mistake. I actually made it look horrible. So this is what it looked like this morning. Oh, so right here, mm. you can see... This is where I tried to fix it, right? So I dropped I dropped this stitch originally. And then when I went to go pick it up, I only I only must have picked up that one bar, but with brioche, you have you know a, a yarn over friend for that guy, and I did not pick up the yarn over friend. So I ended up with this like elongated stitch. And then I was like, well shit, my my counts off i didn't have a yarn over here so i started just like picking up random things because that's how i usually fix my knitting and then it, it usually is, is like you, fine yeah. right 
But with Brio, she can't really do that. So I found an amazing video, um, which I'll try to link down below as well, of how to fix a dropped Brio stitch. So then I, this morning I was like, okay, let me go back and I'm just going to pick it up. I'm going to drop the stitches intentionally, you know, settle them all down. And then I was determined. I was like at the dining room table. I had all my tools in front of me. And then because I did my stupid, well, let me just pick this up and knit that together and do that. The stitch didn't drop all the way. I couldn't drop all the stitches down to where the mistake was because things were all tangled together. So I ended up dropping like a whole block of stitches down to try to see if I can maneuver some things. And I think I did maneuver them together, but I'm at the point now where I'm just like, you know what? I, I don't know. I might just leave it or I might take out the entire brioche section. But I don't want to do that, and every one of my projects has a little bit of me in it, and this might just be the me in this shawl. So this is where, no, it still looks bad. So this is it where looks, it looks a hell of a lot better, better than it did this morning. Yeah, once it's like blocked out, and I get more. <laughs> all your brioche knitters are probably like, "You idiot! You need to take this all out." No, I think we could figure it out, though. I think we could probably figure it out as well. We could give it one more go, and then if it still doesn't look super nice and you're not happy with it and you want to take it out then take it out now i'm i'm usually very good about living with my mistakes but i think because i i'm enjoying this brioche so much um and i think it looks super cool i don't i don't think i can live it's with that it's not as bad though as you would think it would be. I, I you can see it when you point it out. When you're having, when I'm wearing the shawl, nobody in their mother. I know. Nobody's That's gonna know. That's what I'm thinking. So nobody's gonna know. I would sit on it even far away. You're like you. Nobody's gonna know. Yeah. Right. No. I feel like I'm watching a TikTok video. Right. Isn't that what they do? Yeah. Nobody's gonna no, know. No, no, no. Nobody's gonna know. But doesn't that look cool? Yeah. Yeah. I love. On yours, my favorite section is this wedge. I love the wedges. Those, I love those two colors together. I, yeah. Well, you have them kind of here with the welts. I really just love this. I love yeah. those two together. I'm happy with it. It's it's exactly what I wanted. It it's, is. It's very bright and in your face. Um, I think it's going to be really cool. It almost looks like there's like a city down here, and these are like lights strung up like they're having a party. You have a great imagination. I do. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I may imagine that that brioche is no problem, and it may not be a problem. But all of you people, I'm sure I'm going to get a million comments no, I, saying, you idiot. No, I bet you everybody's going to say, leave it. I guarantee you everybody's just going to no, say, No, I don't it. think nobody says that. People don't like when I leave my mistakes in. Yes, they do. But it's me. All right. So that is that. I, I am, I'm really happy. Um, clue four came out, the last clue, yesterday. And it looks it looks cool so, oh that's gonna be a lot of knitting it will be but yeah. i'm off for next week you are so sorry. i may just keep i just may i may just keep going so i'm almost done with the brioche i have two more uh one more full re one and a half repeats of the pattern of the brioche section left before i'm done with that and i could do a little crisscross applesauce and then that's it all right so next is my stephen west shawl and let me just preface this and say this is the cool thing about these these shawls is that they're the same pattern but everybody's is so different yes. and they look they're just all so freaking cool so i am knitting mine out of fiber optic yarns yeah we showed this last week yeah i got this at uh rhinebeck it is a 80 percent superwash merino 10 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon 420 yards my colors are color A is Atlantic. Color B is oh, oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Color C is graphite. Which sometimes this looks black, but sometimes it just lead, uh, leans like a dark gray. Then I have color D, which is gold. That's beautiful. And then lastly, I have E, which is Nebula, hmm. which I don't know why it's called Nebula. Me neither. I would think that a blue would be called like Nebula or purple or something like that. Yeah. So I'm wondering if I have something wrong. Would It, it wouldn't be graphite. Graphite would be gray. Graphite is gray. Yeah. yeah. I don't no, know. it might be like the crab Nebula is maybe that color. 
So I isn't there a crab nebula? I don't know. I am in, currently in working on clue two. I'm working on finishing that up. So here oh. is it takes my breath away. It's my so cool. Shaw. So we had a. I like. I like everything. Everything about it. I love the welts, actually. I really enjoy doing the welts and the bobbles. Bobbles are super easy, y'all. Yeah, they were super easy. Yeah. Um, I was like, look at me bobbling. Yeah. And I love my triangles. I really love this section here, the triangle section with the dark. You can you can really see your curly, curly cues because of the colors that you chose. Yeah, I was happy when I like saw that. Doings. You know what? I thought they looked like snails when I was knitting them. Mm. Before I heard the, the reference of the... Um, the shrimp. The shrimp. I thought they looked like snails. Mm. So I'm interested to see what this is going to look like blocked out because it you can't so really nice. see the colors here. I think my gray, the gray V hides it too much. I almost wish it was lighter. I think it almost invites you to look closer. Like I think that's what your, this shawl, the magic of this shawl is that it invites you to like look closer. It's cool. Um, yeah. So it's. It's a fun knit. It's definitely mm -hmm. a lot of knitting. Clue 2 has been um, a lot. It There's has a lot. been a lot. But, oh, this is what I was thinking. So what I do, and I said this to you, what I do to get through like my knitting when there's a lot of stitches, I compare the number of stitches to something else. So like mm -hmm. we're doing short rows here, and I'm comparing it to a hat and socks. So once I get below, let's say, 80 stitches, I'm like, okay, this is less than a worsted weight hat. Mm -hmm. Once I get below 64 stitches, I'm like, okay, this is less than a sock. So it makes me feel a little bit better. And then I know that I don't have much knitting to go. So I use that as kind of a gauge. And I always use this as a midway point. So I look at the wedges. I'm like, okay, I hit the like blue wedge, which is halfway mark. That was my fourth wedge. So I'm about halfway through my repeat or mm -hmm. whatever knitting. So I can... Uh, feel a little more accomplished oh show the back I, oh. I think the back is cool speaking of i'm glad you, you said see that. all the colors so what i did actually did not not that i didn't enjoy but in this section with the triangles here you have a pretty long flow yeah. and because you're slipping stitches and not knitting them you can't really carry your yarn so i do think my floats were a bit off on the back like I feel like they were... That looks so cool. No, what I'm saying is I, I think they were loose down here and a little bit tighter yeah. up here because my triangles are slightly smaller on the second set of them. How fun is tighter. this, though? Like, this could be its own section. Yeah, I actually really like the way the triangles yeah. look on the back. The, the yeah. knit ones, not the slip stitch ones. So, yeah, here's the back of it. I'm hoping the finished section... But see, your triangles pop out tonight. so much more than mine. Cause, yeah right because you have two dark colors right but those are all the colors you can see the kind of fans oh so there's going to be so many strings to to uh -huh. weave in but i think you can do we try to do weave and steven. yeah we try to do weave and steven and he tells you in the pattern that you can do it and i always love to do weave and steven but a lot of these sections i had a hard time finding an opportunity to do that uh yes yeah i agree all right, all right. So that is all I the knitting that's all the knitting so we are going to jump into, oh wait, so before we jump into acquisitions and like that stuff, I'll do dyeing. So oh, great dyeing. idea. Yeah. So this is all I've dyed this month. I did it a couple weekends ago or a couple weeks ago. What was really fun about this is when I was mixing colors and I only did tonals, mm -hmm. I took one color and then I added an another color to it. All right. So I would do a batch at a time. I'm trying to figure out. I would do a batch at a time and I would make two dye stocks. The same base color in both of them. And then each of the dye stocks, I would add a different second color to just see how they played. So the first one I did um, is this one and this one. So there's a dye powder that I'm not a huge fan of, and I don't know how to use it. So I wanted to find a different way, and that's kind of what got me into this little experiment. So I used that color, 
and I added blue. I can't, I can't with Hold this on. color. I, added I know, blue I'm not going to it, it. And I got this. So you can see it's weird because it almost goes tan yeah. in a certain light, but then it also goes like a mauvey or yeah. dusty color. Yeah. And you can see some darker spots there. Um, so here's a full skein of it. So I do. Oh, so from where you are, it's totally like a almost pinky, dusty rose. Right. But then up here, it looks almost tannish. It de- it really depends on the, the light. light. Yeah. Um, but you can see here, here's a tie Excuse that's me, actually I'm tan. So hungry. it's not tan. Mm. So it's weird. So the next one, I use the same base dye and then I added yellow to it instead of blue. And then I got this beautiful carroty this is orange oh carrot is a great right color it, for this. it reminds right. me of a carrot you're um, absolutely right in i did post a picture of it on instagram the day that i dyed it when it was in the water and it looked much more saturated yeah well when you sent me that picture so i love that color i love mm-hmm. this color yeah but i love the color in the pan so i have to figure out how to get that color made i now actually you know i have the base for it yeah you can just make it darker Um, maybe so i would like to get that a little more saturated so this was really fun to see how it looks really the same dye powder and then adding blue to one and then yellow to the other what it did right and i think i really like i really do love this and this is on i think i dyed it on 80 20 it's so soft so then the next one i did two blues that green is yeah i'm trying to think how i did that one so i did two blues i did a blue with a gray and then blue with green so this was the blue with the gray which is a really nice this reminds me of like a wintry blue oh right like I feel like this is a blue. It reminds me of summertime to for some reason. I was going to say, this reminds me of the blue that you would see on holiday cards yeah. and on wrapping paper. Yeah, maybe you're right. I In my head, it, it just reminds me of like a, a blue sky in a way because it's got some uh, yeah, like but a then there's light this, blue, like a sky blue. Well, you can see here the tonat Like this is a much yeah. grayer area than yeah, this than one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really, really love this one. So I, um, And I wrote all these down so I actually could repeat them. Good. And then I did the same blue. I added a... I love the tonals. I think they're cool. Yeah. So what I like about doing tonals is just that they're a little bit easier. I still haven't for myself found the best way to do like variegated yarns or speckled yarns. I I know the way that I like to speckle. I don't know if it's the... There's no best way to do it. I I know the tool that I like to use to speckle. So then this was the um, the green and the blue. So this is a nice, like, tealy color. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, I did... This is this is great. Um, what the heck did I do? Wasn't there a green one? Yeah, I'm trying to think what I did. I did red. This looks purple almost. This is, but I did a red with... I think yellow i think i did red and yellow for this doesn't that usually make orange yeah so what what did i do red and blue red and blue make purple and then blue and yellow make green yes you're right i did blue blue was the main color okay that i used and then i added red to it and got this and you can see there's like little spots on here where like the red took a little bit more because it in the dye pan it actually absorbs more of the the blue Mm. first and the red kind of is a little bit harder to absorb so um so this took a little bit this is pretty longer yeah this is is a nice purple yeah it's really really purpy (laughs) purpy and it's really purpy i did blue and green this is gorgeous and got a really nice this is almost Mm -hmm. like a grass green or like a I don't want to say Kelly, but it it's a really nice. Yeah. I almost wonder. It's like Irish green. I almost actually like. A I think this was clover. my yellow and blue, and then the other one was my. Why would I have done blue and green twice? I don't know, but yeah, I liked it. 
So that was some dyeing that I've kind of done. I haven't done much. Yeah, but you've been knitting a lot. So I've been knitting a one, ton. One, one takes over the other usually. Yeah, I did a lot prior to Rhinebeck just to get this done. That's all I worked on right. was this. Um, so I think that was even dyed maybe just the week after where I had a little bit of time. So now let's move in to some... So we're going to talk about some Owl Post and some Breaking Break the, the Bank. Bank. But before we do that, um, we have a bunch of coupon codes for you guys. Our coupon codes are always listed below in the description. Mm -hmm. So if you're in not interested notes, in our acquisitions or any of that stuff, uh, it was great to have you here. Thank you for coming by. Smooches, so, love you. See you next all time. All right, so why don't... Um, so we have... Trilogy yarns. It's not super, super, uh, piggish of us. No, this is a full month too. It is. We're almost a month and a half, I, really. Yeah, and we did some damage with our haul from Rhinebeck. Yeah. So this, this was mild. <clears throat> so here's our some purchase. codes that we have. Purchase. So we have um, naughty knitting sacks, which we love. Yes. That's Katie. The code is Prickle Pants 15 for 15% 15 off your order. We have some uh, Trilogy Yarns. That code is NATR15 for 15% 15 off your order, excluding her clubs. Thanks, Nancy. Then we have Knit Swag, which is Kevin and Ray yes. for 15% 15 off your order. We love our mugs. Honestly, I use them all every day. Yeah, all and it's time. not just because we're sitting down a podcast, but we these are our daily. Oh, for sure. Daily use. Does mugs. it look like our iPad is falling? Yes. I'm going to adjust it. There we go. Hey. Okay. I was like, um, I look crooked and it looks a little lower. Got a little droopy. We have Ozone Mama yarn, which is Amber. We oh, talked about her a little did. bit last week. She's a dyer in Connecticut. We ran into her at... Rhinebeck. That place that we went to. Yeah. Rhinebeck. Um, her code is Strat City 15 for 15% 15 off your order. She really has some really cool colorways. She does. Yeah. Then we have Lila Styles. We do. Which is Love NATR10 for 10% 10 off your order. That one expired. I don't know about that one. Which one? Or the, these two. And this one doesn't have an end date either. Well, that one. Did you say that one? No, I don't know if that's yeah, still. Good. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so then I'm we have. Sure. Yeah, so we have always Queenie Believe. The code is nine inch circ for twenty percent off your order. Then we have Doodlebug Yarn Shop, which is N A T R, Yarny Friends for twenty per, um, Yarny Friends twenty for twenty percent off your order. And then this one, I'm not sure. Maybe you should get yourself together next time. No, I'm gonna reach out to some people yeah, who don't have a an good idea. Date. Um, and then we got a new one, which Katie did bags. So it's Kevin and Ray 10 for 10% 10 off your order. And we'll show that in a minute. And, oh, and then we have the quilting princess. Oh yeah. So, um, which is Shoot. NATR 10 for 10% 10 off your order. I know it's our mug rugs. I know. Right? Well, I, and my mug rugs over too. there. Mine, I think I was use, I'm was i using downstairs. So we're going to have all of those linked below. They're shops with a code. So check out their shops. We love being able to share these codes totally. with you guys. Oh, absolutely. Um, yes. Absolutely. So take advantage of those. And now let's jump into Owl Post. All right. Owl Post? Yes. All right. So I, you don't have this. I have this one, right? Okay. All right. So speaking of... No, Na mine's over there. All right. Nancy and Trilogy Yarns. She has a new club. This club is her oh my color God, explosion so nice. minis. Oh. So these are just minis that she dies up. They're not colorways that she has in her shop. You get six 20 gram minis. Look how freaking fun those are. The minis are are on her 80 10 oh, 10 look base. Look at how fluorescent this is right here. And each mini is 80 yards. So look, so this is fun. So fun. So yeah, it's a monthly club. You sign up, and you get six minis. Just like, remember, what explosion of color, explosion color, explosion minis. Color explosion. The coupon code does not work for this because it is a club, but it's a fun little way to add some 
color to your life. Totally. So yeah, Nancy sent us that. So thank you very thank much. Thank you Nancy. so much, Nancy. That was really awesome of you. Um. Oh, I love these though, I, and they're so soft. Do you have owl posts over there? Yeah. All right. So this. Okay. What are you looking for? This is Ashley. Yes, this is Ashley, but I was the looking for there. the name of her shop. Right oh, right. Okay, from Three Yarn Mice. Ashley, oh, it's downstairs. What? I thought it would be Oh, nice it's to... in the fridge. I know. I know. Um, Ashley sent a beautiful card, which I love. Yeah, it's so it's great. so cute. And she sent us a few things. She sent us a... Pom Pom Magazine. Yeah, that was a funny story. She um, yeah, she got it for herself and then couldn't find it. So then she ordered another one. Right. And then when the other one came, she found the one. So she was super generous enough to send that to mm-hmm. us. So this is our first Pom Pom Magazine, I think, right? Well... Issue 37. This was summer of 2021. Kind of, because we got the magazine... The Moon and Turtle, which is released by Pom Pom, but oh, it's, yeah, not, but it's pom-pom. not Pom Pom. Look at all these patterns. <gasps> well, I haven't actually looked at that. Oh, there's cool stories too. Okay, I'm sorry. So she, thank you so much. She sent us this, as well as two bags. Now these are not in her shop yet. She's still playing around with some things, but follow um, follow her on Etsy. Um, I believe it's Etsy. At three yarn mice. Here's the bag. Here's one of the bags. So this is um, this is a nice drawstring bag. It has pockets on the inside. Let me see if I can show this well. Oh my goodness. There's one, two, three, four pockets on the inside. No. Oh. Six pockets on the inside. Holy cow. Ah, 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 ah. ah. He doesn't sound like that anymore. What does he sound like? Um, different. Well, that, that thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> nice box bottom. I love this like marbling. Yeah, like, that's texture. a nice um, yeah fabric. Mm-hmm. And some like coffee cups. coffee cups. Nice drawstring. A little latte cup. A little latte. And then this this bag here you can Adorbs. use this as a notions bag or a project bag as well. This would yeah, be that great could for like be... hat. Hat stuff. or socks. Look at the sparkle inside. Yeah. The glitter. Isn't that cute? And I love the llamas wearing glasses. Are they llamas or alpacas? I think they're alpacas, not llamas. I love the alpacas wearing glasses. Yeah, I would say, I would go alpaca. But they're, I think. This one has the fan glasses, like the... Oh, yeah, they're so they're different, like cat, cool. yeah, cat yeah, eyes. Yeah, 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 super cool. They all have wearing different glasses. Yeah. Adorable. And she also sent us two Almond Roca candies. Because Which, mm-hmm. Go ahead. we mentioned it like a long time, not a long time ago, earlier. It must have been, it was before shop update. Yes. Because I had dyed a yarn that was brown and or, brown and pink that reminded me of Almond Roca from Welcome Home Roxy Carmichael. Mm-hmm. And she, I believe, um, so she was just kind enough to include one for each of us. Yeah. And we meant to eat it last weekend for our cheat day and we forgot. So we're going to eat it today for our cheat day. And I don't know why I put it in the fridge. But I put, you, it, I put it in the fridge. You wanted, you thought it would be better in the fridge for some uh, yeah, reason. Yeah, I didn't want it to like melt. I wasn't sure what it even looked like. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. These um, these might be prizes Yes. in some upcoming giveaways, but we're definitely keeping the pom-pom magazine. Faux show. Faux show. So thank you so much. That was incredible of you. It was. Um, so next up, we got a nice package from Pam of Scow House Yarns, who we ran into while we were at Ryan Beck. So nice awesome. to meet her. Um, so she's gotten into dyeing and we showed some of her yarn previously. She's been selling it strictly at a store. Um, she's hoping to get an Etsy shop up and running. So she's kind of gotten into this since she's retired. And this is, uh, Starry Night. So this is a hundred percent super wash merino. It's a three ply. This is hollow, like Halloween. Love it. So this is on DK. This is 100 grams for 230 yards. Those are some socks. Yeah. This is a green and some black. Little like orangey yellow down mm-hmm. there. Some speckles. This one is Christmassy. This is messy Christmas. 
So this is on a sock weight yarn. This is fingering. It's an MCN, so 80, 10, 10. Ooh. So soft and squishy. Luxurious. And then we got some minis. Look how fun. So I believe this, it's two of the same. So this one is, these two are red suit shoe. They're fingering 80, 10, 10 for 80 yards, 20 grams. And then these are silvery night. Ooh. So this is 75, 25. These are really pretty. They are really pretty. All of it's really yeah. pretty. So thank you very much, Pam. So that we will use so some nice. of those maybe for some giveaways. Yeah. Too. Totally. Who knows? We never know what we're doing, as you guys know. We yeah, that's our MO. We're always a poop show. All right. So you have some other olive posts there? I do. Here. You want to hold one of these up while I hold one of them up? Yeah. So this is from Katie Did Bags. We posted on our stories because we just we had to share. Now I know Halloween is tomorrow, but um, she was running a sale and we have a coupon code and she just came out with these bags, these Halloween drawstring bags. In her shop, she sent us two of them, which I love so much. This one is so cool. It's like um palm reading and crystal balls and the cat with the third eye the cat, yeah the cat with the third eye um oh so cool so good the um the inside there are pockets inside and it's a nice drawstring they're very durable they have the faux leather bottoms um faux and it's leather a, handle yeah it's a great size the quality of her bags and her stitching is incredible so please check her out. Katie did bags. I think she, I don't know if she has any of these left, but um, order them now for like next year because I don't know if she'll have these um, back in her shop next year. They're they're just gorgeous, really really cool. And then did you show that one? Um, I will show this one as well. So this one is the spider webs. It's almost it's like metallic, but I don't think you can really see that there. Um, it's not showing up, but they're they're metallic. Same on the inside with the pockets and the drawstring and the faux um, leather bottom. She does. She has, so she has this one in her shop. Oh, good. What's that one? She has a pumpkin one. Oh, this one I love. This one's gorgeous. She has a tarot card. Tarot yeah, card. I saw that one too. She has um, sugar skulls. So yeah, she definitely has some mm -hmm. holiday or um, Halloween themed ones in uh so check out so we're keeping shop. these these won't be giveaways sorry. she also has masks yeah in there that. oh the spider web one she has yeah oh she does have the spider yeah the she spider has both web. of these in her shop right now yeah and we have the coupon code again it's kevin and ray 10 for 10 yes. percent off your order so that is down below yes so, yes check these. out katie uh right because her other bags are the bucket ones, right? Yeah, the ones with the, so those are the different. love ones it's that a, can like open up. Right, that's a new style for yeah. her with the faux leather bottom and the faux leather handle. Yeah. So definitely check out Katie Did Bags on Etsy. And then our last owl post came from Two Sheeps. I know. Their upcoming 2022, ca 2022 calendar. So what's cool about this is I'm gonna that- I'm going to hang one in my office actually. This is all for small farms. It's celebrating small farms. <coughs> How fun. And there's going to be an exclusive yarn blend or colorway that you can purchase the month that the farm appears in the calendar. Mm -hmm. So there's farms from Vermont, Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania. This one's from Connecticut, Henny Penny. I know, in Ridgefield. I wonder how far away that is from But me. it's really cool because it talks about what type of sheep that they have. So, like, here's a Romney sheep, Dorset, Fiber Llamas, Angora, Nubian goats, and more in this one farm here in Connecticut. How far is Ridgefield from us? We should go. Not far. All right, so... So, yeah. So, last year, I think, if I'm not mistaken, last year was the first year that they did the yep. calendars. We had... Um, so when these came in, it was such a surprise, but a very happy surprise. Yeah, it was really cool. And it was a reminder, like, oh, crap, a year's already passed by since I we know. got them last year. I know. But yeah, definitely check out Two Sheeps. 
they have a great calendars. positive message as well. They stand for, you know, humanity. So uh, totally check them out. Yeah. Follow them on Instagram as well. And the, the pictures are just so great. They're so great. You could, like, use them afterwards and put them in frames for your room, your knit room. Oh, that's a cool idea. Oh, my gosh. Look at, look that, at that thing. He's, oh, he's pretty. Right. All right. So let's start. Let's talk about some um, Breaking the Bank. Breaking the Bank. So I'm going to start with a non yarny thing. Yeah, please. These are so cool. So our friend Tim. Oh, is, and it's so Halloween-y right now. Too. I know. It does graphic design, and he has a shop called Breakfast at Timothy's. Mm -hmm. So it's an online shop. He does some um, events, like, in Connecticut. So I saw these, and this is one of our favorite Halloween movies. Yes. So I had to pick these prints up that he did. These are both based on Practical Magic. Like, seriously, y'all. I know, they're so good. Here's the first one. Um, let's see. So this one is their house, right? Jumping off the roof on Halloween. And it says, it's a quote Sally says at the end of the movie. Uh, there are some things I know for certain. Always throw spilt salt over your left shoulder. Keep rosemary by your garden gate. Plant lavender for luck and fall in love whenever you can. Isn't that sweet? So I thought it was super cute. And then the next one I love because this, this is, is my what, favorite scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. Mine too. Um, and the made for TV versions, like when they edit it, they edit this scene out. What? Yes. It's awful. I awful. Always, awful. Write a letter. Yeah. I'm writing a letter to the CEO. You should. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, carry on. This says. I'm there's triggered a, now. I, I can't even, like, I don't even know if I could focus for the rest of this because that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We should watch it tonight just to make sure. That, Probably. Yeah. Um, do you know it's only on TV tonight, actually? Really? It is not on any streaming service. We should right watch now. it tonight and see if that. No, it'll probably piss me off. Well, I don't want to be in a bad mood. When then I'm you can write it. your letter. Then you should write your letter. You'll be I, triggered. I'm not even going to write it. I'm going to get a typewriter and I'm actually going to. You're going to type a letter and a yeah. typewriter? That's great. I'm going old school. All right. So this, this says there's a little bit of witch in all of us. And it's a scene when she, like, Oh, I love it. And I, then her kids look at her and they're so proud and they're excited that she's her mom and they didn't know the side oh, of her. It's such a great... It. He does a lot of um, fun prints and like prints and magnets and stickers. A lot of Disney stuff. Yeah, um, huge Disney fan. They actually just went to Disney and they were leaving little stickers around for people oh, to really? find. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we will link his shop below yeah, too. Yeah, totally check him out. Really, really cool we stuff. We may actually go. He's at an event tomorrow, so we may travel out and go to his booth. Where? Milford. What's in what's going on in Milford? I don't know. There's like some artsy craft fair. Oh, that's thing fun. Jigger. Okay. So maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Let's do it. And that we got I think the week um oh, I saw it and the I week just before ordered Ryan it. Back, I think. I ordered it online. I was just yeah. like, "Oh, I need these." Yeah. All right. Um this this we meant Should to have get gotten at Ryan Back. At Ryan Back, but we didn't. So we ordered it after the fact. We, I think we, I mean, we talked about this already. We had the pleasure of, of meeting Corey, um, Eichelberger, from Eichelberger from I, I Rock Knits. And she had a booth there talking about, um, showing off this awesome sweater that she had and the book called Knit Words that she put together. And it's so cool. It has in here, um, there's Corey. You know, you should have autographed this for us. I'm just kidding. It's got... Um, You're such a jerk. I know. I'm such a jerk. It's so cool. It's got, like, stitch patterns for, for sayings. Words. And um, you know what I really like, too, for the patterns that are in here? Is... Um, I'm not going to, like, show the whole pattern. But check it's got check boxes. So as you complete the rows, you can just check them off. Which I do that you do on that, a separate yeah. sheet of paper. Um, but You're have, a paper printer for patterns, typically. I usually am, but I've been using the book app, from app Apple, which is yeah, which is so easy, and I can like write on it as well. So um, super cool. I'm gonna try to. I want to try to find a picture of the sweater. But look at the look at the pillow. I want to do the pillow. I love that pillow. Right. That would be another great yarn room. I mean, anywhere totally. in the house pillow, but it would be a great totally. yarn room. 
Decrease, oh. increase, ribbing, SSK, yarn over, knit two together. Love this. Yeah, it's cute. So cute. So um, we were happy to support her. Um, please check her out. I, I know she's got more on her uh, website? website. And her website, we'll have it linked down below. Um, I think it's irockknits.com. Yeah, we'll put it below. Yeah, we'll put it below, though. Um, and with every with this purchase, she included a, a download code for a digital copy as well, if that's more your style. So next up for me, this is... I feel like we've been talking a lot. We have been, because we have a lot to say. It's been a month. I know. This is um, from my Savvy Skeins. What it's, a beautiful color. I know. I think it's beautiful. I don't know if it's called Beautiful Birds, but it's her Birds Club. And this one is the Rose Robin. Here's the inspiration photo or painting. And here is the colorway. So this is pink and purpley and some light gray, dark gray. It is on 80-20, uh, 20% nylon, and it's 420 yards. This is beautiful. Like, Gorgeous. Look. These have all been winners. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have one of them downstairs that I was supposed to cast on a hat for somebody, mm. and I never did. Is that? Oh. Okay. So you have this. that and this. This is all I have left. Oh, no. Yes, thank you. Okay, so... Um, this is another club. Oh, and I have, okay. This is from Nancy over at Trilogy. What is this? Oh, a little, a little accoutrement. What is this? A lip balm? All right, I'm not going to get distracted. Yes, I am. I just want to know what this is. I don't know how to open it. All right, so I got something from Nancy. I had signed up for Nancy's Halloween, her Practical Magic I don't know what this is. advent. And it was a Holy collaboration crap. with Stitching the High Notes. So this is the bag that came with it. Did everybody do theirs already? Oops. Yeah, because you still have another day. Look away. Oh, I don't know if so I'm a fan of that. This is Joanna of Stitching the High Notes. And then the... I think it's like 15 minis or 13. Well, there's number 14. I think 14 minis. But I'm just going to like... This is the epitome of what we're all about. some of these off podcast. for Wow, how cool. They all have like girl power. Let's do some spells. This one is... There's a little witch in all of us. Oh my gosh. I know. I love that one. Right. Um, we have gift of magic. We have one green eye, one blue. And if you hadn't guessed, and if you didn't say it, did you say that it was Practical Magic? I did. Oh, okay. Um, Death Watch Beetle, that damn little oh, thing. Oh, that damn beetle. Ugh. The noise it makes. Um, so, yeah. So, this, and then it does come with the large skein, which is called Practical Magic. And if you haven't opened it, one, two, three. <laughs> Here's Practical Magic. It's beautiful. Actually, it, it is. is beautiful. Oh, it I is. love this, like, salmon-y? color that's interesting yeah it's Ooh, very very it. pretty so um i will not be doing the shawl that you have on with this like you know but last year's what a cool i mean it's definitely a cool way to like think outside the box there's a lot of um there's a lot of patterns out there now for advents or something that or you know similar to advents oh. when you get a bunch of minis and things and it came with some candies Ooh, oh i love skittles they're my favorite I think you say that about every Taste candy. the rainbow. Because I'm starving by this time, so everything's my favorite. All right, you may know. All right, this go. is also from Nancy. This is part of her... Um, Princess Bride Princess Club. Princess Bride Sock Club. Uh, everybody should have this already. This is freaking gorgeous. It's a good color. And the colorway is... And love, true love... Will follow you forever. <laughs> is that not perfect? I it's love so it. It's so good. Right? It's so good. Nancy is so clever. So, uh, some of these, no, most all of these are going to be socks. Um, I think this is the last of my subscription. 
So I need to kind of get on it. But this one came with this. I have to ask Nancy what it what it is. A, a little fun like bee, bee bar cream. Yeah, I don't bee know. bear cream rather. Bee bee bar cream. No. It's it's honey house naturals. I'm I'm not a fan of the smell, and I don't know if it's hand lotion. Or I just rubbed it on my hands. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do with it. So I'll have to find out. <laughs> but I, if it's lotion, I'm... Um, thank you, but nope. It's lotion, I think. That's what I thought, too, but... Oh, it's a, it's a florally smell to it? Maybe that's... It's like honey flowers? Yeah, it's... it's yeah, it's floral. <laughs> so anyway, this I love. I can... The bee bar will stay away. All right. But I love you. So next up is another club. This is our Amanda Knits. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of clubs. This is month Kev, three. We have to stop. We have to. I know we figure do. Our I show. am gonna um, stop this. I'm I'm gonna stop with clubs. I'm gonna. All right. I'm gonna take a break. 2022 intentional buying. All right. I love it. Good. Okay. So this is Amanda Knits. This is the Supernatural Club month three. This is Jerk. Do you guys know what that is? I'm gonna give you a moment to type your response and put it below. So here is Jerk. This is based on Dean Winchester. No, Sam Winchester. It's gorgeous. This is on her 8020. Here's the inspiration photo. Like, I just think it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, I just, like, seriously. Um, so it's, and I just love that there's a... a dialogue about the process she does an excellent job where the inspiration comes from and then it always comes with a little bag of goodies and this has a progress keeper here with a little pentagram so it's a pentacle if it's in a circle oh pentacle Mm -hmm. so and then a sticker of dean or sam what the hell so we should be getting we should be getting dean soon guys um she always includes such fun things. Oh, that's fun. So this is from Pacific Moon Knits. Yeah. And she did our needles at the ready. It comes with a coupon code in here for uh, us. Oh, don't so share So we'll have to go that. check her shop out and make some purchases. All right. That's actually all I have. I have one more. You do. And this one's good, too. I'm saving the... It's not the best. It's not us. the best. But this is amazing. But this is, this and, is absolutely... I do love it. We both bought it, actually. We had to. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad that they didn't think it was a mistake and only send one. I would have had to drive to Quebec. I know. We totally would have. Okay. This is um, the Mystery Forest Club from Le- uh, Boutique Les Garçons, Max and Vincent. Everybody should have gotten theirs already by now. They did show it. We watched their podcast last night. They have a podcast down below, Happy Hour, or not down below. They have a podcast, it's Happy well, it Hour will with be Blake Garçon. It will be down below. Died by Dells and um, Max the Knitter. No, by Dot Dells and Max the Knitter on Instagram. Okay, are you ready? This is called... I don't know what it's called. I don't know if it has anything special, but this is what we have. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's such a good color. It's going to be very difficult to pick up, but there's some, oh, you can kind of see it. There's some bronze, like Stellina in here to give it a little bit of a sparkle. It is um, not in your face, sparkly, but no. it's got just enough of this this glitter. Bronze Sparkle. Yeah, it's a bronze um, Stellina. Mysterious Fox. That's the name of it. Ha, 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 ha. So with these, you have your Mysterious Fox. So you get a sticker. Which, that's the color. That background pink is Absolutely. like the color of the... This is the skein. Skein. So good. So good. Like, he's so talented. A pin? And that's, Look at the tree. That's why. That's why I bought it. I didn't buy it for the yarn. I bought it for the pen, and a little foxtail stitch marker. Yeah. I am so happy with this, Kevin. Um, so, 
their packaging is great and they use the cutest stickers. Kevin has said in the past that he hates opening them because he doesn't want to ruin the stickers. So because Max and Vincent are so accommodating and And just to prove the point, here is my sticker from the packaging. Right, that he had to I'll save. trim it a little bit so I could actually like tape this to something or put it in like a notebook. Because he's so cute. Look at his face. Look I know, it's face. so cute. So I got extra stickers. So they sent extra stickers. So I don't rip this sticker. Right. Or so I could rip this sticker. I have these stickers. Um, yeah, so they but, sent the... Yep. So what I'm really interested to see, and here's the... It's a three-month sock set. Now, Max is the illustrator behind all this. He, he, is. he is so talented. So now that I see the fox, right? I'm thinking, okay, the color of the fox inspires no so the color of the fox has nothing to do with this colorway you don't think you don't no, think he that... said no it doesn't i think he lied no he didn't lie it's not it's not meant to be um it's not meant to be like what's that word not translated uh, inspired mm, that's not the word I'm looking replicated You're is it getting really? closer Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is like a beautiful rose gold. Yeah. And this is a beautiful rose gold. Correct. Yep. So this is... Sorry, I didn't tell you anything about no, this yarn. You're such a great podcast. I know. So this is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon on Cheryl's Cole Gray is the mini. So that's Cheryl's a color that he has in his shop Cole all Gray. the time. Yep. And then this one is on is Mysterious Fox. But he said it's very similar to that rose gold um, one inspired by... Nidorella? Nidorella. Jill. Our, our new friend Jill. You know which one I want? I need to get Meredith's gray because I would love to have like a Grace Anatomy item. I kind of want to just go grab a shopping cart and go like... Behind them? When behind them and just recording shop and just for yarn in there? Yeah, stuff. totally. Um, I actually almost ended up getting... that's. So don't have us... When you have us over to your house, lock that door. I almost ordered... Um, from him for my shawl yeah and i went to the shop but there was like an orange that was behind them because i really wanted an orange in the shawl so it was something mm. like that like one of the colors that i really wanted they just didn't have available so i didn't do it okay um so that is it oh no reading and watching crap we're almost at two hours let's get this up by two hours all right so that's all the yarny goodness let's talk about reading and watching all right we so, have Quite a bit of watching. We do, but I don't remember a lot of them. So we did Midnight Mass, which we, is a oh Netflix, God. like seven or eight episodes. How perfect would it be to watch this weekend? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, uh, it's weird because it's a religious, there's some religion in it and then some supernatural stuff and they're, they're melded together mm -hmm. incredibly well. Very, um, it's very creepy. It's creepy, scary. There's some jump moments, there jump scares. Are. There's some like mind boggly, yes, mess up your brain moments. There's a character who I really did not like. Yeah, we will not speak her name, Beverly. No, it was very um, enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about her, Beverly. <laughs> um, but it was it was really really good. I think we did that in about two nights. Yeah, we. It's only a couple episodes, seven episodes, something seven like that. Seven to eight max. Yeah. Eight mm -hmm. max, I think. Um, we watched, oh, I watched Stepmom, which I've seen before. So Stepmom yeah. a couple days ago with Susan Sarandon and Julia Roberts and Ed Harris. And that's such a good movie. Yeah. Um, we watched the new Dune. Oh, yes. The, the, uh, with, with uh, Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. Zendaya. He was perfect. Per he was great. Did you see the new, the memes about. Zen yeah. What's um, her name? Zendaya? Zendaya. And her or yeah. there's also one about Jason Momoa's character, Duncan Idaho. People making fun of that oh, name. Oh, no. I didn't see that one. There's a big thing about his name, Duncan Idaho. No. But they're, yeah, they're making fun of her, like, because she doesn't say much in the movie. No, and she's not. So I've actually read a little bit, like, some interviews from the producer something Villanueva. And it's a very different feel from other dune yeah oh the, I, yeah, the yeah two yeah. other movies mm -hmm. but with this one he said his focus was um jessica and paul jessica everybody else was 
their stories can be expanded upon in the next film, which has officially been picked up. So oh, it has? Will, yeah, oh, it wonderful. officially has. So they will be making a second one coming out Good. in 2023. Um, I enjoyed it compared I to the other two versions of mm-hmm. the movie that I've seen. There is one scene that I wish that they added. There's the dinner party that takes place in the book and in at least the made for TV version that I think plays a bit of a role in it. So I, I was kind of missing that and I believe it was shot and not made. So hopefully in like a director's cut, did they would be show there. those alien people? No, the, I like, I should, the travel, not travelers. What are they called? The, I, yeah, I know the you know people know who, who navigators, the, navigators. No, they don't show them. And I, there were a lot of things that they didn't show. Like there's, um, mentats, which are, they play a big part in the story, mm-hmm. uh, and they got very little screen time. Oh. So there are definitely some adjustments. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was though. enjoyable. It was, yeah, same. I think now with the technology that we have in the CGI, yeah, I mean the fight scenes, it, it was just so much larger mm-hmm. than the previous two. That it was such a great world building one. Um, I I actually want to go watch it again because I was knitting my. I think my eye cord loops during that. Yes. So I didn't get to pay a lot of attention to it. So I would like to watch it without knitting and really focus on that. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of on my thing to do. And then um, we've moved on to Lucifer season four. We did. So we got a couple episodes in of that. We saw his hiney. We did see it. <laughs> it's how, and you, how you mark shows. It. You can tell immediately that I think this is the season that Netflix took it over. Yeah. It's just a little bit different. Um, I actually think the quality of the picture is better than too. the t- uh, TV. Yeah, same. Channel Fox did it. I think that's about it. The, you know, our good mythical morning stuff, our podcasts, and I don't know that we've watched much else. No, I don't um, think so. All right, so how about reading? Um, I I finished a discovery of witches. A little bit early. It's supposed to be finishing up tomorrow night if you're doing the real-time read-along. But I finished up a couple of days early, and I did start the second book, which is um, Shadow of Night. Uh, For those of you who have not read it, I know we've talked about this all the time, or have just started reading it, maybe only read the second book once. Read it again, because it gets better every time you read it. The second one can kind of seem like a slog fest a little bit at times, yep. but there's a lot of hidden gems. Um, and I think that Deborah Geary does an amazing... It's not Deborah Geary. No, it's but... not Deborah Geary. Who do, who's Deborah Geary? Deborah Geary is the Witchling series. Oh, yeah. Um, um, it's... Deborah Harkness. Deborah Harkness. <laughs> Thanks. Got distracted by Tarquin being cute. I know. He's adorable yeah. right now. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I'm on the second one. Good job. Thanks. I have finished two books and I started a third one. So I've wrapped up my soul bond, um, series by Haley Turner. This, um, is a seven book series. So I finished book six, which is an echo and the sorrow and book seven, which is a veiled and hollowed Eve. Mm -hmm. This book series I actually I really like the way that it ended I wish there was like one more thing added to the ending okay um but it didn't make it or break it so the whole series really it starts from events that took place when he was the main character Patrick was I think seven and this in everything that's happened in his life happened because of that one event Mm -hmm. and he in turn had a soul debt to pay to persephone so his life has been controlled by the gods and the fates since that moment um and this is just almost like a snapshot i think the entire series takes place about over a year to two years maybe a year yeah i would say about two years okay um and there's gods from every type of would you know um archetype yeah that you could think of so you had i mean from everywhere there the only one that 
kind not there wasn't God from Christianity in there, but there were angels. Okay. So they did like bring that Christianity into sure. it for a brief moment. Um, but yeah, you had like your Greek, Roman, Aztec, um, all bunch of like liter, and they all showed up throughout the entire series. So it was you hear really, my stomach growling. I do hear your stomach growling. I'm mine will probably growl soon too. So it was just really, really good. The characters I did not like at the beginning in the first book. I you have almost, 20 seconds to reach the two-hour oh, mark. Oh, sugar. Almost gave up on them, and I really thoroughly enjoyed them by the end of this book. So um, I highly recommend it. It is a male-male novel, supernatural, so there is some, like, Skinamax scenes in it. If you don't like that, then I wouldn't read it. Um, <laughs> and then I just started reading two nights ago. Up oh, you're over. A, um, one of my... Gay novellas. This is like a Hallmark movie with some Skinamax scenes in it. It's called Firefly Lane by Riley Hart, who's one of my favorite authors in that genre. Um, what I like about this book is that the characters are in their 40s, which oh. isn't very common in that genre. They're normally strapping like young late 20s, early 30s. Sure. They go to the gym every day and they eat salads and like boil chicken breasts for dinner. Um Meanwhile, we're going to be warming up some We're pizza. warming up pizza and some uh, garlic cheese bites. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have some almond roca and we've got ice cream in the freezer. We <laughs> so. sure do. Happy 40. Ha happy 40. Salute. Happy cheat day. So yeah, that's what I'm reading. And I believe that is everything. We hit two hours, but that was for a full month's worth of stuff. So that's not bad. Right. Imagine if we did more knitting. We didn't do we... a month's worth of knitting. Yeah, we sure did. We've knit a, almost, I finished a sweater oh, in yeah, that time true. frame. We have our shawls. True. Okay. You did some dish claws. We each have socks. We've knit. Yeah. No, I'm happy with, with everything. Yeah. It was a good month. It was. So, so we will be back at our regular schedule and we will see everybody in a fortnight. Until then, I hope you guys have uh, a good two weeks. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.